today we're really going to dig into this sermon by Pastor Stephen Furtick. Okay. It's called Reverse the Ripple. I'm intrigued. It's she about like how our actions have these ripple effects, you know? They go way beyond just the surface. Oh, absolutely. The impact of our choices. Yeah. It's fascinating how a single word can have such a lasting effect. And Furtick, he illustrates this with some really compelling stories and biblical parallels. Yeah, he starts off strong talking about Joshua leading the Israelites. Right, right into the promised land. God tells him to take these stones. Not just any stones, though. Yeah. From the Jordan River, the riverbed they crossed. What's the significance there? It's like a tangible reminder. It's not just about what they saw with their own eyes, you know, the miracle of the water parting, but it's about what God said he would do. Building your life on faith, even when things around you feel uncertain. It's about trusting in something bigger than yourself. Exactly. Which is especially powerful because Furtick gets really personal. Oh, does he? He talks about this time when he was supposed to preach about reaching the world, sharing the gospel. Mm. But get this, he was filled with doubt, like in a bathroom stall. We've all had those bathroom stall moments, though. Maybe not about preaching, but those moments of doubt, they creep in. Oh, totally relatable. But he owns that vulnerability, which is refreshing. Absolutely. It makes his message even more powerful because he's not coming from this place of, I have it all figured out. Exactly. He's yeah. right there with us. In the trenches. And then he hits us with this ripple effect analogy. Oh, I love this visual. Yeah. So powerful. He talks about how our actions, our words, even our thoughts, they're like stones we're dropping in water. Creating these ripples that just extend outward. And we often don't realize how far they reach or who they touch. And to really drive that point home, he shares the story about a woman. Okay. She had kept this voicemail from him for years. Wow. What was on the voicemail? It was about, like, taking a leap of faith, stepping out and pursuing your dreams. But the thing is, yeah. it wasn't even directed at her specifically. It's amazing how a message, even if it's not intended for you, can still resonate so deeply, you know? Yeah. It speaks volumes about the power of encouragement, of speaking life into people's situations. Totally. We might not always see the immediate impact, but our words, they matter. They have this incredible power to shape lives. It really makes you think twice about those little interactions, doesn't it? It really does. Oh, yeah. And that actually leads perfectly into the heart of Furtick's message, this idea of reversing the ripple. We talk about being mindful of the impact we have, but how do we actively change the course of those ripples? Right, because it's so easy to just try and manage the ripples, you know? Exactly. He calls it ripple management. Trying to control the outward stuff without actually getting to the source. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a much deeper wound. Exactly. It might look okay from the outside, but it doesn't address the root cause. We do this all the time. We try to manage those symptoms, you know, our anxieties, frustrations, reactions. Instead of pausing and really asking ourselves. Yeah, what's the source of this? What's really going on underneath? And that's a much harder question to wrestle with. It is, because it requires real honesty. Looking inward. Being willing to confront maybe some uncomfortable truths about ourselves. Yeah, and sometimes we look for those easier solutions. Right, like a quick fix. Yeah, therapy's great, self-help books, they have their place. Absolutely. But Furtick, he cautions against relying solely on those external solutions. You need the internal work too, you know. It's like reading a recipe for bread but never actually baking it. I love that. You might have the knowledge, but you haven't really experienced the transformation. And that's where it gets really interesting because Furtick says, sometimes reversing the ripple isn't about adding something new. Okay, I'm listening. It's about removing something that's been holding us back. Interesting. What kind of things are we talking about here? He calls them stones. These burdens, bitterness, regret, insecurities, things that just weigh us down and keep us stuck. Those things have a ripple effect too, don't they? They create these patterns of self-doubt and fear. Exactly. And he tells this incredibly powerful story. This woman who had been carrying around this past hurt for years. Yeah. And she finally, she just acknowledges this pain. She names it. And then she surrenders it. To God. Yes. And that's when she finds true freedom, true healing. It's like those stones were blocking the flow of grace in her life. Yes. And by releasing them, she created space for something new. But how do we actually do that? How do we identify and let go of those ingrained patterns, those hurts? That's the million dollar question. And Furtick, he suggests it starts with being honest with ourselves and with God. We have to acknowledge those stones instead of hiding them. And that takes a lot of courage. It does, but that's where faith comes in, right? Yeah. That trust 
that even in those moments when we feel broken, God's grace is enough. It's that surrender, isn't it? Yes. Surrendering those burdens, those insecurities, those hurts, we don't have to carry them alone. And when we hand them over to God, mm. when we trust him with them, that's when we experience the freedom of forgiveness. Which brings us to that final story, the woman caught in adultery. Oh, such a powerful story. It's a classic example of judging the ripple, but not really understanding the rock that caused it. It's easy to get caught up in judging others, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. We see the outward actions, but... We miss the bigger picture. We don't always see the struggles, the pain, the circumstances that led them there. And that's what's so striking about this story, how Jesus responds. He doesn't condemn her. No, not at all. He doesn't condone her actions, but he also doesn't condemn her as a person. There's so much grace in that. It's a beautiful picture of grace, isn't it? He acknowledges her past, but he also offers her this invitation to a new future. Go, he says, and sin no more. It's powerful. It really is. It reminds us that grace doesn't just erase the consequences of our choices, but... But it gives us a chance to start fresh. Yes. A chance for redemption, for a new beginning. It's about recognizing that our mistakes don't define us. We all have that capacity for change, for growth. We can become something more than we are today. This deep dive has been pretty incredible. It really has. Furtick, he really challenges us to, like, take a good look inward. Figure out what those stones are that we're carrying around. And to find the courage to let them go. Which is easier said than done. Oh, absolutely. It's not easy. But he reminds us we don't have to do it alone. We have each other. We do. And more importantly, we have God. He emphasizes that true transformation. It happens in that relationship with him. It's about surrendering those burdens, those insecurities. All those things we try to carry on our own. When we surrender them to him, we trust him with those things. That's where we experience true grace, his love. And that's where we find the freedom to actually reverse the ripple. Exactly. It starts within us, but then it extends outward. It allows us to create positive change in our own lives and in the world around us. So as we wrap this up, what's the one thing you're going to take away from this? What really stuck with you? That we all have a ripple effect. It's a powerful thought. Every choice we make, every word we speak, it creates these ripples. They can be ripples of hope of encouragement, of healing, and sometimes the most impactful ripples come from letting go, yeah. not holding on. That's a powerful thought to end on. It's a call to live intentionally, to be mindful of the impact we're having, and to remember that even when we make mistakes, even when we fall short, God's grace is always there. It's enough. Beautifully said. That's something we can all hold on to.